General of the Sea, Hisashi Kurokawa, strode slowly beside the immense, deep basin, lightly slapping his left boot at every step with a short, tightly woven whip. A wisp of dust drifted away from his striped pants leg with each strike. The handle of the whip was garishly ornate, and the gruesome golden sculpture capping it appealed to his sense of mockery. It looked strikingly like a flattened Grick face. Beyond the basin, a hot wind blew swirling dust devils amid a sea of ool workers swarming over the flat, denuded landscape that bordered the wide river, and the hazy orange sun blazed fiercely down from above. The wind reeked of rot, feces, and an untold number of partially cannibalized, festering corpses. Those scents were renewed each day as the defecating, dying thousands toiled, and the stench was almost unbearable. Yet bear it he did. To show weakness of any sort under the circumstances was tantamount to suicide in the great game he played. Skeletal frameworks arose amid this teeming mass, erected by muscle power alone. Once again Kurokawa marveled at the discipline that could accomplish so much with such apparently mindless labor. Groups of Grick Ool performed many of the same functions as various machines in a factory. Some shaped massive timbers with a tool resembling an elongated as, and that was all they did, while other groups were dedicated solely to moving the timbers to areas where still others set them in place. A little farther along, other teams did the same thing with an only subtly different timber. It was the most wondrous example of non-mechanized mass production he'd ever seen, and the scope and specialization of the endeavor surely put the construction of the Great Pyramids to shame. There were overseers, to be sure, that served much the same purpose here as sergeants and officers mine in battle. They orchestrated the timing and direction of every task. Some led bearers to the next mighty skeleton where their particular timber was required. Others flashed a continuous stream of bearers, burdened with massive tree trunks felled in the ever more distant forest toward the timber shaper's tools. Ool dropped from illness or exhaustion everywhere he looked, only to be trampled to death by those behind them. Some took quick passing gobbets of flesh from the often still moving dead. Kurokawa was sickened, but enthralled. Such discipline! such symmetry, such simple mechanical grace. Grick industry was driven by a living Grick machine. When a part broke down or wore out, it quickly and automatically replaced itself with another. He felt himself on the very cusp of some profound revelation concerning the most fundamental nature of things. He was a naval officer, but also an engineer, and the complexity of machinery had fascinated him even as a child, here, however, was a machine that appealed to him in an almost spiritual way, not because it was complex, but because of its almost perfect simplicity.